Kyoto Bolt fam, it's the director. Well, for a popular demand, you guys did it. I'm in charge of the team and I'm drafting Brock Bowers at five. What you gonna do about it? Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yodable fam. <laughs> it's the director. I, I have just such a special episode lined up for you guys today. One that I hinted at last week talking about something crazy going down at the early part of this week well here it is bald fam the los angeles chargers invited me and a handful of bolt creators down to the practice facility to experience something rather epic <laughs> and today's today's video i want to share with you guys what that epicness was what it entailed and what maybe it means for the future of, I don't know, this channel, the relationship uh, with the Chargers, and just the excitement of being able to have any involvement at all with the team, especially in a season that's so exciting, bringing in Jim Harbaugh, changing things over to what the new culture is going to look like. Maybe the YouTubers finding a little bit more connection with the Chargers. I don't know. Either way, it's an exciting time to be alive if you're the director, if you're any Chargers content creator that was out there. And uh, I just got to say thank you to you guys, man. Like, none of this would have happened <laughs> if you guys didn't show up for my content. Find whatever entertainment it is that you find in the director. Um, this was beyond my wildest dreams. I honestly could not believe a single second uh, uh, of my experience out there. It was just so surreal. And, and, and the thought of... You guys showing up and, and helping us get, what, close to 50,000 subs at this point. We're very, very close. It's it's surreal. And honestly, it would not have been possible without your guys' support, your guys' uh, continued viewership and, and your loyalty. Just thank you. Thank you, everybody out there, for, for your parts and allowing me to do what I do. I love my job tremendously. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And... Um, it's a big and tender moment for me. So thank you, Bolt fam. You're as much a part of this as I am, and, and it, it truly means the world. So with that being said, uh, let's jump into this, man. Before we do, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action. It's a great way to support the channel. Have some fun along the way. Newcomers, definitely take a looky looky. We got something in terms of golf. You crazy people bet it non-golf. You know what? Have fun with it, man. Get in there. You guys know what you're doing. You guys know way better than I do as to who to select in that particular category. Well, before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, bell, notification helps me out a lot. Helps me get noticed by the Chargers. <laughs> with that, let's get into it. Lights. Camera. Action. My meeting <laughs> with the Los Angeles Chargers. It's surreal. It's surreal. You know what I feel like right now and how this video is going to feel like to you guys? You know that episode in The Office <laughs> when Michael, he finally like he quits and everybody wants to know what happened. He finally has a story that everybody wants to hear and he's milking it for everything it's worth. Welcome to this video. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys every single detail. We're going to get to all the juicy stuff, but I want to set the table here a little bit, okay? Because, yes, it was a big deal, and it's something that really threw me off guard. No indication. And to kind of let you guys know, like, ahead of time, I have been mentioned by the Chargers a couple of times. Um, of course, you guys remember they put me in that uh, um, reveal video for the uh, the schedule and everything and uh, with, you know, the anime stuff, which was really, really epic. They put my reaction alongside a lot of other Chargers content creator reactions in there. Um, that was one of the first times I was like, yo, hey, <laughs> I exist. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, and I'm not going out there trying to be like the big, you know, head honcho guy. You know, uh, I want to be part of everything going on with the Chargers. I want to be big, bad, known within the team. No, it was just it, that first time felt super surreal to me that my favorite team that I've spent so much time and, and, and energy with and just love and passion for like that I, I was anywhere on their radar. And that was that was awesome. That was awesome. And a couple of times throughout the past, there have been these little, like, you know, mentions, which which was awesome, right? And that was honestly enough to sustain me for 
the lifetime of this channel. <laughs> um, that being said, I haven't had really any talkings with the Chargers prior to this, okay? And it happened just kind of all of a sudden. You know, I was wrapping up, filming some stuff for the channel and was getting ready to, to kick back and relax, spend time with the family. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, my son was off visiting his grandmother, so I had the house for myself, actually. I do remember that. And I was, I was on um, comms with my brother on a video game. We're playing Apex. And all of a sudden, I get a message on my phone. And I had to like do a double take because, you know, when you're playing Apex, you have to be locked in. But all of a sudden I see this this logo and I'm like, hang on, this is from the Chargers. <laughs> I got that little yellow check mark next to the name on Twitter. And I was like, this this is kind of I wonder what the heck's up. I open it up and and they're asking me to give um, to give them a call. OK, hope I'm not saying too much by saying there's this lovely man by the name of Jamal. Um, who helped organize everything and, and I got on the phone with him and he gave me the rundown of, of what they're trying to accomplish um, in the upcoming week. Now at this point I had no idea when it was going to be. I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, there wasn't a lot of information given on on what the experience would be like or who was going to be there or anything like that. But um, he told me it would be very worthwhile coming out. And then he told me it was in a few days. So I was like, whoa, wait a minute. If you guys are a fan of this channel, you'll know that I am not in California. I got a lot of ties to California, but I don't live there, okay? Um, it takes a plane trip to get to California for me. And that's why I don't you know, go out to everything all the time. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a hike for the director. But I decided that um, I told him, I was like, we're going to make it happen. We're going to find a way. Um, we're going to get out there and, and we're going to participate. I wouldn't miss this. The Chargers call, you come a running. <laughs> so we had a scramble. I, I went out and, and found, you know, plane tickets for as reasonably cheap as we could, <laughs> given the short notice. Uh, my wife instantly, too. She's been a huge, huge part of this whole thing since the beginning. Um, when I decided to go full time, it was a huge risk. She she shouldered a lot of the responsibilities uh, in terms of giving me the space and, and and the freedom to make that happen. And I wanted to make sure she was part of this. You know, maybe I should ask for permission for for like a, a plus one, but I didn't care. I was just like, I'm bringing my wife. Okay, uh, if we're gonna take the hike, I'm bringing my wife. So I get plane tickets for both of us, and and we start getting ready because we got to leave in like. I don't know. At that point, it's like 48 hours, 72 hours, something like that. And uh, I'm I'm panicking a little bit because still, I don't know what's going to happen. I only knew that we were going to get to, you know, participate in some team stuff and and that um, we were going to get to talk with some of the high ups in, in the Chargers organization. So I'm I'm flipping out um, and we're just trying everything we can to get ready for it. I'm getting a steady cam for, you know, my phone because nowadays you can film everything there and it looks fantastic. You guys are going to see some footage throughout this video from that experience there. Um, just making sure that we have all the bells and whistles ready to go out there and film um, with the Chargers. Now, we get the flight, um, very early morning flight the day of. This is going to be Monday the 8th. And uh, we get up 5 a.m.-ish. We're getting ready. We, we catch our flight. We get there. Um, try to make things as easy as possible before getting to the practice facility. Um, and I wanted to make sure, like, this this is like the kind of planning that was going on in my head. I was like, I want to be a little early just in case we can, you know, talk to somebody. But I also want to be, I don't want to be too early because that's rude to our hosts. I want to be that cool guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who shows up just when he's wanted. So we wait until, like, you know, half an hour before to call the Uber. It's about a 10-minute drive up to the facility. And this dude, bless his heart. That's something my wife says all the time. She's from Alabama. Bless his heart. I, I don't know how, because it's not the hardest hotel to get into. The dude gets lost, okay? We see him, that little icon on the Uber, just kind of going around the hotel over and over, trying to find the little skinny road that goes into to the front of the uh, of the hotel. I'm running to the like to the corner because I can see him like passing us. I'm like, stop, we'll get in. Like we'll, we'll walk over to like across the street, somewhere easier for you to pick us. Like, no, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. 20, 25 minutes later, we finally get into the Uber. Um, it's a 10 minute drive down there. So director who wanted to be like 15, 20 minutes early ended up being five minutes late, which killed me inside, especially for a part coming up here in just a second. Okay. So we finally make it out to the facility and we pull up into the parking lot, the little like, you know, courtyard, like the little drive up. And I, I'm beside myself because I'm like, <laughs> This is how much of a fan I am, okay? This is how little football analytic like minded that I am compared to the fan that I am. <laughs> I look up and I'm like, in my brain I can hear the dialogue. Oh my god, it's the place from All In. <laughs> it's where they shot the All In series. Oh my god. I've 
I'm so stoked, right? I see people walking around to the front. I'm still unsure what's happening, what what to do, where to go. Um, so we get out and we start looking around to see, you know, where we're supposed to be received. And you guys know the courtyard, right? That you see in the show a lot where the players are going in and out. I noticed a bunch of people standing around. And I remember it in the back of my mind. I was like, oh, today's the, the solar eclipse, right? Supposedly it's the end of times. But excitingly, it's, a, it's an opportunity to go see the solar eclipse. So I see people out there. I don't know if they're looking at it, getting ready for it. And I get a little bit closer and I notice that there are some familiar faces. Because at this point, I didn't know. I didn't know other content creators had been um, invited. I think I actually knew like maybe one or two might be there, but I didn't know the number of us that were going to show up. And the first person I noticed, because he's holding a, a steady cam, I would I would recognize uh, his face from anywhere, uh, was Michael McLean. I was like, that's Michael. And I immediately get excited because honestly, we've worked with Michael before. Um, I met him up at the last game that we went to. Love the guy. Okay. Next to him, I'm seeing some other faces I recognize, and also Dan Wolkenstein, who me and him, huge buddies, right? He's like my OG, like with the Chargers, let's get together, let's have some fun, you know, other content creator. I was beside myself at this point. Dan probably felt I was attacking him <laughs> with my affection. I go up and grab him, I'm like, dude, I had no idea you were going to be here, which kind of, you know, speaks to the, the secrecy of the... Uh, the opportunity here because me and Dan talk a lot. Me and Michael talk a lot. Nobody knew each other were going to be there, right? Because we didn't know what the parameters were here. But we love each other. <laughs> and I'm sure have we thought that there was permission to speak that we would all have gotten together anyway. But um, it, I was instantly excited. Okay. Then came my first wave of being starstruck. I don't know. I, 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 I like to label my things in terms of like... Um, these points that I want to hit on my notes, and I, I labeled this one the Starstruck Courtyard. <laughs> because even before meeting my first Chargers player, I was a bit starstruck, okay? The first uh, face that I saw that I've not never met in person was uh, Daniel Wade from Locked On Chargers. You'll know him um, and David. Those guys are awesome. I've done shows with them in the past. Very awesome dudes, super fun to geek out with. Like the, I don't know, guys. I don't have a ton of Chargers friends in my circle at home. Okay, a big reason why I feel like I resonate with a lot of my audience is that I know a lot of you guys are from places that don't have a ton of Chargers fandom. It feels like the Chargers fandom has has really spread all over the world, right? And there's a lot of people that maybe are they're the only Chargers fan in their town. Um, I have some Chargers fans out here. But not enough to like super like get together all the time and just talk bolts every day. You know what I mean? That's part of the reason why this channel works. You are that people for me now, Bolt fam. Um, but Daniel Wade and, and David and and, and Wolkenstein and, and Michael McLean, like all these guys are dudes that I, I love to just geek out with whenever we do a show together. Um, and I've never met Daniel in person. Super excited to talk to him. Like it was crazy. I don't know. Like I, I've talked to these guys before. I've seen them on their channel. I mean, quite a lot. Uh, just because I make Chargers content doesn't mean I don't consume Chargers content. I'm trying to get as much as I can just like everybody else. <laughs> and so, yeah, I watch Daniel a lot. I watch uh, Wolkenstein a lot. I watch Michael a lot. I watch Garrett, the next guy that we uh, that we visited a lot. Like, it was surreal. I was, I was very honored <laughs> to be in the same place as all these guys, dude. Like, it was wild. So we met Daniel Wade. I was super excited to meet him, um, and then I saw Garrett. Right, I think Garrett was was um, at the time he was. I think he was talking to one of the Spanoses. Right, I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> There's Garrett from Lightning Round Podcast. Uh, and then come up to me. I, I recognize this. I, I'll be honest, and I didn't tell him this because we didn't have a lot of time to talk afterwards. Um, I I didn't know which Duggan it was, <laughs> but I recognized one of the boys from charger chat okay i was like there's a there's a doug in here as i got closer i was like okay i'm pretty sure this is coach <laughs> this is kyle duggan dude i shook his hand um <laughs> kyle was mentioning to me he had uh, we both brought uh what are called gimbals okay they're like little stabilizers for your phone camera or whatever camera that you're using uh and i come from a background of film and i know kyle's brother um has background in film too and i've talked with him a ton right i think Spoiler alert, we might have something coming out soon. Who knows? Uh, I know he's very uh, film-oriented, right? The brother. Well, Kyle... Kyle reminded me of... He's got, like, that Dr. Grant <laughs> uh, energy from Jurassic Park. You know, they'll come at you from here and here and technology. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and he was having a tough time with the gimbal 
which just tickled me silly, right? He was I mean, he was such a cool dude too, man. The do- the dude knows his football. I'm pretty sure if I remember, he's a he's a real life coach as well. Um, and he was just he was a blast to talk with, get insight from, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But Kyle was Kyle was great, and then the other Kyle, who I honestly apologize, I don't know your last name, but um, I know him from Bolt Bros, except for I knew him with the glasses on. Right. So as soon as he took the glasses off, I was like, hey, that's still Kyle. He, he's that's cool, dude. Like uh, and we got talking with Kyle and everybody and and it was a blast. So first off, like I, I was so honored to be in the same place as all these dudes. Um, Just like it felt like I was in uh, the presence of Chargers royalty right off the bat. And we hadn't even met any of the coaches or players yet, which was super exciting. OK, so all of a sudden it felt like a uh, high school reunion with play or with classmates I'd only talked to over the phone some of them and some of them I had classes with like it was super exciting um I get talking to Jamal one of the guys uh, with the Chargers um uh about what the experience was about to be and they they shuffle us all up into the media room where you guys are going to see a lot of footage of us up there goofing off (laughs) sorry Chargers (laughs) I can be a little immature at times, but we're all having fun out here, soaking up the experience. We get up there and they kind of let us talk amongst ourselves while we wait for the interviews to start. And the interviews, which we're all super stoked for, mind you, we don't know who's being interviewed this day. We just knew that there might be a player. We assumed there was going to be some coaches. Uh, We didn't know who was going to be present. But um, we were all hyping ourselves up about it. And there was a good little while that we're all kind of sitting in the same room just chatting, right? Well, we get to the table. Um, there's a couple of tables because, you know, there's a lot of us in there. And I sit down with some of the guys, with Daniel and, and Kyle and, and Michael. And we get talking about, you know, how cool is this? You know, everybody's excited to see what's going on. And and we got to see the eclipse. One of the guys brought me one of those, like, special glasses. We're looking at it. It was, it was very cool to kind of get things kicked off. And then I think it was Michael who mentioned, and Michael and Jamal mentioned that, um, <laughs> Some of the guys that got here early, man, it was cool because we took an impromptu tour and my my stomach dropped. I was like, oh, you don't say. <laughs> They're like, yeah, man, they took us into the equipment room. We got to go out into the practice, you know, uh, field. And we saw the guys out there stretching. Ben Herbert was out there in his bald glory, you know, ripping on the team and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you don't say. <laughs> and in my mind, I just I see that same graphic of the, the Uber driver circling my hotel, not able to find the guy. We're a little bit late. We missed the impromptu tour. Um. The guys explained it at first, like, oh, you don't know? Well, yeah, we all had an opportunity. We all sat on Justin Herbert's lap, told him what we wanted for Christmas. <laughs> it was crazy. And they explained to me what really happened. I was still just like, oh, my God, of course. Of course, we were late. And, of course, we missed the tour. But uh, either way, I was still super excited. Um, if you guys actually want to see some cool footage of that, um, Michael, who was on top of it, dude, he put out a video yesterday. Uh, going over his experience and there's a lot of footage all that stuff i don't think there was a lot of stuff uh in terms of like the locker room and stuff because you couldn't film everything um but he got a really cool like that part that we missed go watch michael's video because he did a really good job uh documenting all of that anyway at this point we're all sitting down and something surreal happened and it's something that i've only seen happen a couple of times um per a lot of organization mostly by um dan wolkenstein from chargers unleashed um, we kind of had a round table, very impromptu. It was very organic. It wasn't planned, obviously. All of us being in the same place, excited about the Chargers, excited about what's about to happen. We just got gabbing. And I'm going to kill my, uh, not kill myself, but kick myself <laughs> for the longest time that I didn't record the whole thing. Because this was epic. We started talking about the draft. We started talking about prospects. We started talking about, do you want to trade down? Do you want to trade up? Um, some of the value guys that we like in the draft, some of the guys in the roster that could be looking better this season. It was the ultimate Avengers style round table in person with some of the biggest names in Chargers content creation. And it was beautiful <laughs> to be a part of. It was it was glorious. <laughs> and I'm I'm one day, dude, we'll we'll be able to do this in person again and we'll have everybody you know, in the same place and, and, and we'll record it this time, but it was awesome. And it really warmed up everybody's engines for what was about to happen next, okay? After we had our little gab, and we're all excited and we're revved up and we're, we're hyped up and fired up, we're excited for what's about to happen, um, the interviewers start shuffling in. And again, it's all very impromptu. We don't know what's going on. Um, the first man that walks in was Gus Edwards. 
and I'm like, oh my god, because <laughs> in person you get to see this man and his, like his size, like he's. That's cool, dude. And I'm a big dude. I think the first thing people mention to me when they meet me for the first time, if they watch the show or whatever, they're like, oh, director, you're a big guy. Well, this man was big. <laughs> this was a big, like, it was pretty immediate to me in person seeing the different style of offense that we're going to run because this just, I don't know, train engine, this, this, this uh, Mack truck of a human being was going to be toting the ball for us which is super exciting all of a sudden. So they get everybody to sit down. At this point, they told us that we're not going to ask any questions, which I was a little bit bummed about because I wanted to, obviously. Um, but either way, just being able to sit down and and, and watch all of this unfold was, was exciting enough. And then something unexpected happened. I saw the back of someone's head sit down in front of me. And I don't know, man. There's very few people on this planet where you see the back of their head and you know exactly who it is. And the, and the interview gets started, and I hear him. Yeah, I see him pull out his phone. I hear him ask his first question. Daniel Popper was sitting in front of me, y'all. <laughs> Daniel freaking Popper. I was like, this is insane. This is unreal. I'm in the same room, be it like sitting right behind the man of the people and Daniel Popper, who I've only had a couple of interactions with. I don't know who did it. What are you yahoos? Love you, Bolt fam. There was some troll out there a couple of years ago, um, and I was getting tagged all over the place for this, that went out to Daniel Popper and was trying to tell him in his live chat or something that I had a problem with the pop, that me and Popper were butting heads, that I didn't, I wasn't a fan of Daniel Popper and that blah, 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 blah. Director was talking smack about you, Popper. Who is this guy? I see him, I see people talking about the director on a YouTube beef. I've never been in a YouTube beef before. I'm, I'm new to the YouTube game. I was mortified. <laughs> I was like, what are you guys doing? This is the man. This is Dan Popper. You're trying to make me look like a fool in front of the Daniel Popper? So I went in. I tried to message him. I clarified. I was like, bro, these are all tro trolls, dude. Like, I am so, so, so humble to even be mentioned in your chat, let alone, like, you know, a fan. I'm a huge fan of Daniel Popper, the athletic, all that kind of stuff. He's the, he's the man of the people for the Chargers in terms of, like, you know, telling us what's up with the team. And I don't remember what happened, but I'm pretty sure everything was good. Um, all of that was running through my head as I saw Daniel Popper in front of me ask questions to Gus Edwards. And I was like, okay, all right. I'm going to jump him after this. I'm going to get a picture. I even said it in one of our, my interactions with one of the, one of the guys. I, if we see Popper, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump him for a photo. Jump him? Oh. So I got to be quicker on the delivery. You mean? <laughs> what did Popper do to you? Uh, my family, we I'm just gonna... have a history. I was so excited. So Daniel Popper, if you're out there seeing this somewhere, I'm so so honored to have sat behind you. I've been getting questions. You're you're a celebrity in these parts. Been quite like, what does he smell like? And even in one of the videos, they said, "I was like, the man smells of pine and, and masculinity." It's it's the Daniel Popper, y'all. And I can tell the whole world that he smells like this is content. This is content day. <laughs> we did it. Um. Anyway, it was really fun. They actually shuffled us out too fast. So I wasn't able to to catch Daniel for a photo or anything. But um, either way, let's talk about the interviews. Okay. Gus Edwards walks in there and. I'm not going to share with you guys every detail of the interview because you can access those online. Um, the Chargers posted it. A lot of the guys posted it. Um, some cool stuff in there. And I was able to film the entire thing. I might like release them on Twitter or something. I don't know. Just my perspective of the same interview. Um, but either way, uh, we really got to understand like where Gus's head was, how excited he was to be with the team and Justin Herbert. And honestly, just kind of how shocked how... how um, similar and, and seamless the transition was from Baltimore to here in terms of like maybe what the system looks like maybe what his he's going to be asked to do I think it was the big part of it like he's being asked to do this this bell cow kind of thing this this specific style of running and and um it was it was exciting to hear all those details right well at the tail end of it Jamal he's sitting in the back he tells everybody well, okay now let's let the podcasters have a shot I was like <laughs> Wait, really? We get to ask questions? Okay. So in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm immediately like, what do I ask? What do I ask? What do I ask? No, favorite ice cream is not appropriate. No, favorite movie is not appropriate. No, did you have this Uber driver this morning? Were you late? This, that's not appropriate. I, I, I couldn't. I had a couple of questions in mind. Um, I, I was rubbing elbows with Dan Wolkenstein afterwards. I was like, I finally found the question. And he jumped me right before it. Like he, he jumped in front of me right before it and asked that same question about him and Justin Herbert. I was like, dang it. You know, I missed out on asking. Um, Gus Edwards a question, but it was really cool to hear everybody from our community being able to chime in. I was like, wow, what an honor. This is huge. I posted it on my personal uh, Facebook 
profile. A lot of people know that I'm a huge Chargers fan, that I'm doing something on YouTube. And now everybody's seeing me ask questions to the Chargers. They're like, well, what's up? <laughs> When's the last time we got a drink? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's cool. It was awesome. It was on, it was an honor. Um, after Gus Edwards was done, Andy Bischoff came in. And he's our um, run game slash tight end coordinator. Very, very cool dude, right? He was the embodiment of like a coach. You know what I mean? This dude's a coach, coach. The coach is coach. Um, he was a pleasure to listen to. Um, he talked a lot about, you know, the philosophies of the offensive line, which is really exciting. Um, the tight end group and and some of the guys and in, in the system they're trying to implement. Yada, 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 yada. Very exciting stuff. Okay. I was, I again, I have the whole thing recorded that I might release um, maybe even on the channel. I don't know. Um, but we weren't allowed to ask questions after um, Bischoff's uh, segment, which I, I had, I kind of had a couple of things I wanted to ask him about the run game. Um, specifically about, and again, this will kill me. The question I wanted to ask him was how the new style, the new system of run game was going to help the Chargers avoid the disaster that's been the trend of losing games, uh, of, of uh, dropping games at the last second, losing games at the last second, um, losing the lead at the last second. I had it well phrased in my mind, okay? Um, didn't get to ask that question. They shuffle him off. They bring the next guy in, and it's Marcus Brady. And Brady... Be it, you know, still a very serious energy. Um, he was, he was just seemed like the nicest dude. And so immediately down goes my guard. I'm like, I'm definitely going to ask this guy a question. Like, he seems like the kind of dude that I could go ask advice for, you know, if I was uh, uh, in a vulnerable place. So I was like, I like Marcus Brady. Um, I, and I was very interested. Everybody's very interested in what's going to happen in the past game. And I had the perfect question in the back of my mind um, that I was getting ready to ask. Um, I don't know if Dan spoke up. One of the guys from... The, uh, the Chargers content guys spoke up and I was like, please don't ask that question. I need to ask at least one question while we're in the press conference. And at the very tail end, I, I worked up the courage. I was like, okay, director, it's your time to shine. And I asked him this. Chargers fans are always begging for the deep ball week in and week out. Is there a plan to make that a more efficient uh, part of the offense? Uh, we're going to take what the defense gives us. But yeah, we've got to be able to stretch the field. It's always got to be a threat, especially with... Um, Justin's arm, I mean, he can push the ball down the field. So, yes, we definitely got to be able to do that to open up things underneath. I think we did pretty good, man. I was excited. I think I saw Marcus, like, you know, his smile and everything. Like, he knew what we were talking about. And I know that. Like, if I ever go back and I'm doing the press conference thing again or whatever, like, this is the kind of angle I will, I'm always going to take. Like, I... I tell you guys this all the time. I'm not an analyst. I'm not like a pro level, like in the X's and O's kind of guy. I don't know if I ever will be that person. I'm a fan. I'm I'm the big friggin' fan of the Chargers. And I want to be kind of the mouthpiece for you guys in some way, shape, or form. Because I have the same perspective, right? I'm not so deep that I understand the investments of, you know, plays and, 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 and signings in terms of, you know, like the deep X's and O's. I'm learning a lot. But I'm a fan. And I, I love being connected to you guys that way. And so if I have a perspective of a fan, I want to ask questions from a fan's perspective. And that was my goal with that question was um, that's a big thing I hear about uh, in our community is what the, the game, the pass game is going to look like and what the deep ball is going to look like. And I wanted to make sure that those were being heard. So um, if that ever happens again, that's still going to be my same approach. OK, so that was one of the highlights of my life, <laughs> being able to ask a question at a Chargers press conference. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just, I'm still even thinking about it. I'm just, I'm beside myself. I can't, I can't believe this is real life. I was, I was so honored. Okay. Um, after that, they shuffled him out and I was getting ready. Like quite literally, I was putting that like safari hat on from Jurassic Park. I was getting ready to go on the hunt and grab a picture with Daniel Popper. Like I, I wanted to shake hands with Pop so, so bad. Unfortunately, like it was almost like a, a herding of sheep they, they shuffled us out so quickly after the uh after the interviews were over um so i didn't get a chance to say hi to pop hi pop <laughs> um and uh they, they took us into um a separate room okay and, but to do that they, they took us through um like a chargers like the front out like the the reception area facility and we go up the stairs and i'm hoping i was cool to film all this but we'll show a little bit of everything right 
Um, and they put us in this big, big boardroom. And I recognized it from like Chargers content, right? And all in and all this stuff. I'm like, what's happening right now? Surprise, surprise, we're controlling the draft, man. <laughs> Get your laptops out. If it all goes wrong, it's all Michael's fault. And at this point, again, we kind of knew what was going to happen with the interviews a little bit. We kind of knew there was going to be maybe a Chargers content creator here and there, but everything was kind of, we were kind of left in the dark about a lot of stuff. Um, and they sit us down and say, we'll be right back. Okay. Um, and I'm sitting there with all these content creators with my lovely wife too. And, and we're all hyped. Like what's going to happen? What's about to happen? Like what, what is so secretive? Why can't we talk about it? Uh, or why? Or why can't? Uh, uh, why haven't they talked about it to us yet? Like, what? What's the? What's the gist here? And we we started goofing off and talking about Chargers again. And and the next thing we know, um, the doors open. And from there, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been sworn to secrecy. There are things that I, I I will say this. I met with the Chargers. Okay. Um, we sat and we talked about a lot of stuff in terms of you know maybe having more to do with each other in the future nothing is concrete right um and, and again i i honestly I, I wish i could but i can't speak much about anything that happened afterwards um but all i'm gonna say is that there is some exciting stuff some very very exciting stuff coming for this season and i i honestly don't know how to express my gratitude for having any involvement with the Chargers 2024 year. I I am just, it's a dream for me. This is all still a dream. I feel like this morning um, I woke up and it was all a dream because it was honestly something I never thought I would get to experience going out there and, and, and meeting the you know Chargers coaches and, and players and, and other content creators. Like it was just so exciting, everything. Um, and some of the com conversations that we had were very important is all I'm going to say. These were very important conversations. And the hype's building, man. I'm sorry to leave you guys with a cliffhanger here. Maybe I'll be able to talk about it more in the future. Um, but I think one thing's for sure is that I will probably be, have more in-person involvement um, with some of, we'll say, we'll I'll start off with some of the the other content creators, right? Um, I think what kind of shocked me with throughout this whole thing was just how important that aspect of everything was for me. And I'm talking about getting to meet these people in my circle of content creation for the Chargers. Because as amazing as it was to be there with the Bolts and as amazing as it was to be there and goof off with the guys in the media room afterwards, which was hilarious, um, being able to have conversations with these guys and me and, and, and Kyle from Bolt Bros went out to, to lunch with my wife afterwards too and, and we got to talk even more. Um, it it made me realize just kind of how special it is to be in this circle um, and how cool of people are in this circle and how, how crazy it is that this passion for the Chargers brought us all together in such an unforeseen way. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I am I am beyond honored to be involved with these people, uh, with the Chargers and with the content creators. And I'm excited to be able to build something with them, with you, my audience, with the Chargers, with, with the creators. Like... There's some cool stuff coming up. The future looks very, very bright. And yes, I'm also talking about the team. There's some crazy, crazy stuff happening with the team um, that you guys should be very excited for. And, and I promise I'll, I'll, I'll open up more about what that is when we get the green light for it. Um, but just a surreal experience, a real experience. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to the Chargers um, for this opportunity. This was this was insane. Um, I, I, I hope again to see you guys soon <laughs> um and thank you to the other content creators man like i it's like the most exclusive club i've ever been in in my life <laughs> and uh, i i feel very um included uh when it comes to this group of people that are all chasing the same dream and now it kind of feels like we're all chasing it together which is which is pretty awesome so you'll see some stuff with me and some of these guys we've already been filming some stuff that's that's slotted to come out soon um, but just super excited to, to get to know everybody a little bit more and, and, um, think about the next hurdle we'll take together. Cause this is crazy. Like I, I'm very happy to be sharing this experience with all you guys. So anyway, thank you everybody so much for joining me. Story time with the director. I know it's a long video. I'm sorry. This is the kind of storyteller I am. I like to go into the details and the goofiness and all that, but this is one of the most important things that's ever happened to me. And you guys are 50,000. 
um, are the reason that it happened, and you're exactly the people I want to share this story with. So thank you again, everybody, truly from the bottom of my heart for helping me get to this point. Even if, it, if the buck ends here, <laughs> it will have surpassed every expectation I've had um, in my experience as a content creator and as a Chargers fan. So much love to all you guys out there. Well, guys, thank you so much. This has been The Director. If you like what you saw here, hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up, stay frosty, and I can't believe I was breathing the same air as Jim friggin' Harbaugh. Let's go. Michael, any comments about the photos that linked on Instagram this morning? You know, the photos that leaked on Instagram, it's all fake news. In this building, we're just focused on winning football games. We're not focused on anything else. No emails, no Instagram, no Twitter. We're just trying to run the ball. But there were pretty graphic photos, Michael. We have to, like, circle back to that. You know, when it comes to the photos, everyone needs to keep in mind that I've always been a fan of bubble prospects. All right. This is not looking good for Michael. <laughs> <laughs>